The Bible says in Matthew 12, 21, in his name, the nations will put their hope. Welcome to The Hope Connection with Harry Jackson. Stay tuned. In the next 30 minutes, we will share with you how God wants you to live in peace, joy, and prosperity. Bishop Jackson is the senior pastor of Hope Christian Church in Beltsville, Maryland. He travels the world ministering to millions, teaching us how we should not live in fear, but how to become an overcomer, touching our world with the love of Jesus Christ, the hope for all mankind. And now your host, Harry Jackson. Welcome to the Hope Connection. I'm your host, Harry Jackson. On today's broadcast, we're going to be talking about the power, the anointing, and the authority of the local church, and how unity informs how that church functions. I believe that we're in an age in which the message of Billy Graham is being teamed with that of Martin Luther King Jr., in that everyone must be saved and we must change social structures. But I don't believe this is going to come from the top, but rather it's going to come from the local church up. Every church has an assignment. Every church has been called by God to do something unique. I believe that our local church is a prophetic center, which faith at the very root of it, praise and worship, the manifest presence of God, and a myriad of other things we're to walk in. So don't you touch that dial. Stay right there and you'll find out how you should enter into your destiny by supporting your local church. Stay tuned. Whenever good news is slow in coming, when bad circumstances don't seem to improve, when we feel forsaken and powerless, Bishop Jackson wants you to know that the change you long for can be yours. For a donation of $25 or more, we will send you this inspirational book titled, You Were Born For More. Discover six steps to breaking through to your destiny. Bishop Jackson teaches you to open the pathway to blessings, draw closer to Christ, how to grow in love and endurance, and how you can experience the favor of God. Call right now. The number is 888-333-6196 or go to the website at thehopeconnection.org. If you would like to write us, the address is on the screen. God wants us to experience His love, to be a light to the world, and this book will guide you in that purpose. You will believe again and discover that you were truly born for more. Finally, the third word or third tertiary meaning of this word yeshev, a dwell, means to tarry, which has, again, three concepts, waiting or occupying. Waiting. Jesus said, wait till you be endued with power from on high. Sit in your chair. When they went to the upper room, they didn't know how long they were going to have to wait. Ten days they waited, right? Some folks who were told to go and wait, they couldn't wait. Only 120 out of 500 folk waited the 10 days for the download of the outpouring of the Spirit of God. God is getting ready to do something in Omaha. God is getting ready to do something in Lord of Hosts. God is getting ready to move. Can I say this respectfully to you? You need to be at the prayer meeting when the Holy Ghost falls. How many believe that there are some folk who, when Pentecost fell and the cloven tongues of fire manifest, that they wish they had still been at the meeting? How, How many know there was probably somebody there who could have been the preacher instead of Peter? But they didn't show up at the meeting. They didn't have the continuity of service. They didn't sit with alignment and assignment and therefore receive authority. And so they didn't tarry long enough. Secondly, part of the tearing is worshiping and waiting and expecting and believing. And finally, 
the warfare. The warfare means when the devil hits you. I was starting a meeting. We had this meeting in, at the Reconciled Church meeting three years ago. And I'll never forget, I won't call the leader's name. You'd know the name if I called you a world-famous leader. The week before the meeting, he had to take a trip to the emergency room and had some major physical problems. And I said, are, are you going to be all right? Are you going to have uh, the meeting? And they said, oh, that's just the devil. I'm thinking, oh, you just went to an emergency room. You're, you are in a situation where you're under major physical attack, but they understood the principle of warfare and the idea that you got to stay in position no matter what. When God has ordained a thing that you're involved in to move forward, then you treat all the stuff that hits you as warfare. Instead of saying, oh, well, you know, I, 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 I'm not feeling so well. I can't show up at church. I, I feel too tired. I guess I'll stay home. Uh, you got all kind of issues. Now, now, when I was growing up, we, 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 we had, a, I was in a rough neighborhood. And on my team, on my gang, I didn't want no chumps. <coughs> I want nobody could talk, but they couldn't fight. I, I, I need somebody to be there. Somebody who's got my back. Now, the Bible says that a brother is born for adversity. Friend, love is at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. So I believe that in adversity, problem, and warfare, that's when you're gonna find who the true brethren, true sisters, true folk are. Sometimes we're tested. Well, the devil's always trying the door to figure out where he can get in. Hey, if I do this, what do they do? If I do that, what do they do? If I push this button, when and where can they jump? What is going to make them move out of alignment? Don't take down. Don't back down. Not now. You've come too far to give up now. It is with a great sense of urgency that it comes to you today. Like the great apostle Peter, I believe I've been commissioned to feed the Lord's sheep in this critical season. The nations of the world are in a great end time struggle. Darkness and evil contend with the light. Anarchy, hostility, and fear are literally overwhelming God's people. But I believe that God has called our ministry to bring a word of hope and healing to the United States, Canada, and the nations of the world. We are dedicated to teaching and preaching the gospel with power and authority. For nearly 38 years, I've preached to strengthen individual believers, helping them turn their tragedies to triumphs. In addition, I have been a student of current affairs and a cultural commentator through numerous mediums, opinion, editorials in print, news commentary on television and radio, and a convener of national forums on race and practical issues of faith. Will you help me fulfill this great calling? Our television partners will help us take a word of hope to Africa by funding the purchase of mobile medical clinics and other missions initiatives. Our partners will also assist us in taking a word of hope and racial healing to strife-torn cities by facilitating regional events under the banner of the Reconciled Church Movement. And finally, the teaching and resources we have developed for you will strengthen you for your own unique calling in these last and evil days. God bless you. This is Bishop Harry Jackson. Lives are being changed, so call right now or go to our website. The information is on the screen. Help Bishop Harry Jackson bring hope and racial healing to the world.
Call 888-333-6196 or go to thehopeconnection.org. Let me close by saying this with you and we'll pray. These principles of unity are working all kinds of levels. I sat the Monday before my wife's funeral on Friday with some leaders, major national leaders, national television ministries. Brothers came and sat down talking to me, just encouraging me, which I appreciate it. And they looked at me, they asked me the question. They said, do you believe that the white church in America needs to repent for racism in America? That the white evangelical church has been guilty of allowing racism to exist in America. He said, now, I believe what you say. I felt like they're just criticizing and judging. And I prayed because I thought to myself at first, A, hear me out, I thought that's a dumb question as an African American. I mean, boy, you, y'all got, really got a blind spot. Because when my dad was growing up, he saw people lynched. And the church didn't say anything. He's on his paper route. He's walking through the community the back way. He saw people have been tortured and hung. And the church in that city knew who the people were that were in the KKK. And does the church need to repent for tolerating that? I think so. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And there's a man in my dad's town that was tortured. They put gasoline on his body, burned him while he was still alive, drug him through the town square. And I said, does the church have to repent? Mm. But I thought, and I said, Lord, help me. Then I told him, I said, in a manner of speaking, yes, the church, white-led church has to repent, but it's greater than that. Truth is, the whole church. The whole church has to repent. And I mentioned some names. I said, there are people who have put their anger on display, created disunity, and they really helped the devil's agenda. All he wants to bring is division. So we can heal the, even this race problem in America. Yes. We can heal the problem of sexual harassment that's happening in the marketplace. Yeah. All this stuff that was alleged that Bill Cosby and others did. We can solve all that hypocrisy if, believe it or not, if the church were unified yes. and leading the way. At least you'd have 60% of the nation that wasn't operating under the darkness that seemed to permeate the land. Are you with me? <coughs> so let me cite this and then I'm out. I was on my way to a meeting in Maine. And as I was going to Maine uh, to preach about some marriage difficulties, there's an arena full of leaders, hundreds of pastors were there. And I was one of the keynote speakers preaching at an evening service on a Sunday night. The Lord kept saying to me, look up the connection between your city and Maine. I didn't know it was in connection. By the time I got there, I had looked up on my smartphone. I realized that Harriet Beecher Stowe, before the Civil War, had written the book called Uncle Tom's Cabin. Uncle Tom's Cabin was used by God to mobilize the predominantly white New England area for a abolition movement. And in the state of Maine, one-tenth of their men went and volunteered to go into the Civil War. Out of the one-tenth that went to fight, and Maine is notoriously lacking of black people, not very many black folk in Maine. One-tenth of the sons of Maine died in the Civil War. 
And I began to look at that. I, I, I read a story at the Battle of Gettysburg. A general from Maine who had been a professor of religion named Joshua Chamberlain was on the hill at Gettysburg. His party had been charged by the Confederates several times. They'd run up the hill to attack him. Joshua Chamberlain looked up into heaven. He had been a professor of theology, professor in religion before he volunteered because of the abolition of slavery, his commitment to that, he volunteered to serve in the Union Army. He looked up and he recorded in later writings, he had an open vision. In the vision, he saw that if that hill he was standing on was taken, the South would win the Civil War. He saw that they were going to lose. Gettysburg is only miles away from Washington, D.C. So Joshua Chamberlain, a man of peace, a man of the Bible, who is standing on an uncommon territory, fighting a battle for people that didn't look like him just because his Bible said all people are created in the image of God. They were out of ammunition. And the Confederates were at the bottom of the hill getting ready to charge them again. So Chamberlain told his men, said, affix the bayonets. He led the charge. They chased them down the hill. They ran down the hill, charged the Confederates. Confederates not knowing that the guys charging them had no ammunition and were only running on the inspiration of their leader. They dropped their weapons and surrendered. And the Battle of Gettysburg was won. That's a true story. Later on, Joshua Chamberlain became the governor of Maine. It was an amazing story. And he called his, his state to prayer and fasting and seeking God. But there was another general who was with him at the end of the Civil War. That general went before Congress, and he made the appeal. He said, these people that we freed, they need to be educated. There needs to be a university that will train them, teach them how to read and write and to pursue higher pursuits. And back and forth they went, and finally they granted him the right to begin that university. And as part of the honor for his battle and his efforts, they decided to name the university after him. So Howard University was named after General Howard from the state of Maine, who is a Christian, who is a Christian who fought for people who couldn't fight for themselves. Don't tell me there's no hope to heal the racial problem in America. Don't, don't, don't tell me that we can't do this together. You, you gotta sit down, I got one last story. One last story, this is interesting how history sometimes is even bigger Dan, I need you to open this up for me, brother. I got to read this to make sure I get it right. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. How many ever heard of the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People? It was formed in 1909 as a biracial organization for the advancement of African Americans, and there are three major people who advanced it. Many would know, African Americans know the name W.E.B. Du Bois. Well, some say Du Bois, but it's Du Bois. Mary White Ovington, a white woman suffragette who was for the right for women to vote, and a guy named Morfield 
Dan, story, rather. Now, it's interesting, if you look at their backgrounds, that you find that there had been a bunch of lynchings that had happened of African Americans at the turn of the century. And those people came together, predominantly white, and said, we will not put up with black people being tortured, persecuted, and lynched. The money came from whites. <coughs> the first 20 years, the guy who was the president of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People was a man named Moorfield Story. Moorfield Story, I'll read this from uh, the Wikipedia, was born in 1845 in Roxbury, Massachusetts, suburb of Boston. His family was descended from the earliest Puritan settlers in New England and had close connections with the abolitionist movement. Story's father was a Boston lawyer. The young Story went to the Boston Latin School and graduated in 1862 during the beginning of the Civil War. He continued on to Harvard where he was a member of the Glee Club and Harvard Law School and he talked about all of this stuff. But he was the president this white guy, descendant of Puritan, who came to this country for religious reasons. 20 years of the organization. This man was the president. And the money that came in, not from black people, it was from white people. It wasn't until the 1970s that you had the first executive director of the NAACP that was black. How dare revisionist historians tell us that racism has got to be the ruling order of America? How dare them say white evangelicals are evil? How dare them forget the fact that brother rose up against brother in the name of our God? They did away with slavery in America fought for civil rights. What we need now is unity. But we can't have unity that impacts the nation unless you walk in unity right here, right now, at this church. We need you to rise up. We need you to live the Christian life. We don't need another rhetorician. We don't need another debater. What we need is Christian livers, Christian who walk in unity, Christians who believe and pray the Bible. Whenever good news is slow in coming, when bad circumstances don't seem to improve, when we feel forsaken and powerless, Bishop Jackson wants you to know that the change you long for can be yours. For a donation of $25 or more, we will send you this inspirational book titled, You Were Born For More. Discover six steps to breaking through to your destiny. Bishop Jackson teaches you to open the pathway to blessings, draw closer to Christ, how to grow in love and endurance, and how you can experience the favor of God. Call right now. The number is 888-333-6196 or go to the website at thehopeconnection.org. If you would like to write us, the address is on the screen. God wants us to experience His love, to be a light to the world, and this book will guide you in that purpose. You will believe again and discover that you were truly born for more. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm your host, Harry Jackson. I'm excited about this broadcast. You know, someone came up to me at a meeting I was in not too long ago. They recognized me and basically said, hey, you preach so hard. They don't realize that the hoarseness that occasionally accompanies the sound of my voice is actually a telltale leftover sign of the fact that I was healed and overcame cancer of the esophagus 
by all rights, I shouldn't have a voice at all, but I'm ministering and walking in supernatural power because of the grace of God and the anointing upon my life. I believe I've been called to bring a message of health, a message of healing, a message of deliverance, a message of hope and destiny to a lost and dying world. Some years ago, as I was kneeling by a little green chair in my living room, I was praying. I'd just been set free from the power of demonic oppression. God really had released me in a marvelous way. And I heard the voice of the Lord say this, you who were once bound shall now go forth and set others free in the name of Jesus. And you will have a unique healing and deliverance ministry. The Lord said, I'll send you to the four corners of the earth. That is happening right now. We're living it out because I found the local church. God set me free in the context of a local ministry. I was discipled, raised up, taught to hear the voice of God, began to enter into teaching and prophetic ministry. And I'm here today because I was born into a household of faith. I was nurtured in a specific location and God sent me forth, not in disobedience, rebellion, or breakaway kind of mentality, uh, but because the leadership of that church said, like they said in the book of Acts chapter 13, separate me, Harry, for the work whereunto I've called him. And we were sent forth to start a local church at the behest of our local leaders. And I'm thankful to God for that operation. Today, I want to challenge you to get in the local church. I want to challenge you to find a place where you belong. Now, the number appearing at the bottom of your screen is a place where you can get prayer, ministry, you can get a monthly uh, partner's gift and find out what's going on with our ministry. We want you to do all of that, but get into a local church and help us preach this gospel. And if you're ever in the Washington, D.C. area, remember, we're saving a seat just for you. God bless you. See you again next time. Thank you for joining Bishop Jackson today. The preceding program has been brought to you by the partners and friends of the Hope Connection. For more information, please visit our website at www.thehopeconnection.org. Join us next week for an exciting adventure into God's Word.